Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? I'm back. I just wanted to do a quick revisit of Tropico 6. Um, I did like, I think, seven videos on this. And I think we played all the way up to... Uh, I thought it was the modern era, or the Cold War era at least. And I just wanted to do a quick little video because... This game, if you don't understand exactly how the game works, it's really hard to play. It's really easy to maybe get to the Cold War era and then just lose all your money. And I know I did it several times trying different, you know, strategies and stuff on the game. But this one seemed to have worked out very well. We're about a, at a million dollars. We could have a lot more but I've been as you see I've been spending all that money <laughs> and we're still on the main island we haven't even uh, gone to the other islands usually I like to make a different island like the tourist island but, <laughs> but uh, I put it all down here like in the industrial districts <laughs> but um we'll go ahead and click play here um, we're in the modern era, we're in the positive, we're making a lot of money, and how we're doing that... See, when I started in the colonial era, era this was it right here. This this little section right here was... I, I should have recorded it, but I didn't. And then this was the government sector over here. I just moved the palace over here, and... Yeah, look, we got 99% approval. And... I started out with, you know, the castle right here, and I built this, and a couple libraries, and, you know, and it's just all grown into this, but how I made my money in the very beginning, like, in the colonial, we got a fire going on, in the colonial era, I played as long as I, well, not as long as I could, but I played in the colonial era for a long time, and before I got to the World Wars era, I had about 300 grand, and I just spent all of that at the beginning of the World Wars era. <clears throat> it's kind of what you got to do to um, make sure everything is efficient. So, in, in the start of the game, I made all my money with these farms. Uh, there was a couple more right here, and this, you know, that I've upgraded, but. In the colonial era, these were all farms right here, and um, these ranches. <clears throat> and if you put them in a certain way, see the efficiency is 146 percent. That's gone down a little bit because because um, I've replaced these farms. But immediately, what if you if you put all of your farms so they're all um, you know in range of each other? And you set them all to multiculture and put them all at um, you know maximum funding. You're gonna get really high percentages. Look at this one, 210 percent. And if there's just one guy there, look look at the amount of tobacco he's producing. When they're all there, <clears throat> this place fills up like so quick. And um, so like in the beginning, I had these farms and ranches. And these ranches also, you know, the cattle ranches, they can uh, manure fertilizer, which only eight people voted against me. Off with their heads! Had no. <laughs> um, all these ranches, you want at least, I guess, one or two of these per ranch. Uh, uh, Okay, um, we'll pause it. You want at least one or two of these Teamster offices for your ranch. Because the Teamster offices are what gets everything to the port. This is what makes all of your money. Look at that one, 44000 And the reason why all this stuff is getting to the port is because of all these Teamsters offices. And... Every time you build a farm or an industry or something, you should be adding a Teamster office. And all these Teamster offices are double shifts. Every single one of them. And this ain't just all of them. 
I have literally like 50 of these damn things. Let's see, let's count these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And mind you, each one of them has 12 workers. 14. There's none over here. The rest of them are all over here. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, <laughs> 30, 31, 32, 33. And there might be more. 33? I probably could use more. I mean, we're making a lot of money, but I, I have all these industries. And every time you build one of these buildings, that's going to take a worker from here to supply it. You know, so the more stuff you get built that needs supplied, the more trucks you need to supply everything. You see all these trucks on the road? Those are all Teamsters. Teamsters everywhere. The whole city's full of them. <laughs> Look at all of these. These are all the trucks moving all the product everywhere. And I don't even, you could set them at, oh, that one is at full. Oh, they are all at full, okay. They're all working at 125% efficiency. For the longest time, I had them on this budget. Um, but I wanted a little more efficiency, so I just upped the budget. Once you get to a certain point, um, the budget ain't going to really matter a lot. Like in this modern era... You know, I have all the industry, and that's what you really need to make money in this game. Yeah, in the beginning, the farms and the mines are okay in the colonial era, but once you get out of that colonial era, again, you need to leave that area with a bunch of money, or era with a bunch of money, so you can build your industry, because that's what's going to be making you all that money. And you can't just send the stuff to the port and, you know hope you're gonna make a lot of money you gotta do the trade contracts you see right here I have every single one and um, in the beginning in the colonial era I used a lot of that money just to keep buying all the trade contracts so the way to use this is you see okay look I can ship export aluminum and I'm gonna get an extra 15 percent on that if you're not doing the trade contracts, you're just going to get the standard price every time that, you know, they take your stuff out. So, to make lots of money in this game, one thing you need to do is export stuff. And you can make money by importing things too. So, like, for instance, China, I can import some coal from China, and I can export coal to Russia. So, I'm... This one's not very advantageous. It's only, it's negative 15% and, well, yeah. So I import coal from China for cheaper and turn around and export it to Russia for more money. And this is the best way to make a lot of money in the game. This is your main tool to make all the money. And this is what keeps you happy, or keeps your alliances, the people happy. Right now, we just got into this modern era not long ago and <laughs> I had these all up close to 100 but then I just took financial aid from every single one of them and that's why it's like that right now um, like in the uh, Cold War era and the World Wars era I'll um, you know keep both of them happy and use them both for money because um, you can ask them for financial aid. Uh, they got to be above 71 relation, but I would just play them both until I had to pick a side. Then I'd pick one side and, you know, finish the era. Ah, oh, we lost this. We lost another one. Uh, okay. Um, this one is kind of useless for me because I have that one... Uh, artifact that every child that's born automatically gets a high school education so this one doesn't really matter much to me um, 
Department of Defense. I usually in the <clears throat> early wars of the or early era, like World War eras, I'll you usually have the the minister set to this one. You know, police stations provides infantry squads during conflict. Um, but I only use that if I'm expecting to be attacked. Um, Ten percent upkeep costs. See, these are important positions when you get into world wars that you gotta have filled. Um, we'll do this minus ten percent. This is an another thing um, that you need to have. You gotta have a lot of money in your Swiss bank account because this this really helps you in the game you can make people basically spend money to make people like you um, different factions or countries and there's there's all sorts of tools in here blueprints solar power plant work modes you know I like to get the stage distractions and convincing talks from these uh, when they come up so if I get a task that I don't really want to do I can just use the convincing talk and complete the task you know <laughs> I'm doing, you know, some tasks for Middle East and America here. Finish the guerrilla patrol. This is the conservatives uh, producing cigars. Um, and I gotta, I guess, upgrade the job happiness. Um, this is that artifact. This is the one you can get. Oh, um, another thing that'll make you a lot of money is, you know, your pirate cove and uh, commando garrison and that pirate cove would be colonial era pirate or the commando garrison would be world wars and then in uh, cold war you'll have the um, the spy academy and I mainly use it for this getting blueprints and then in modern era, you have uh, the Cyber Operations Center. But this is where you get those special buildings. And we have the, the castle there. And uh, we also have the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> and um, Eiffel Tower. And they all have like special, you know, things. And we have the Rajasthan. Whatever. See, this all children automatically gain high school education. So I don't even need high schools. Don't need to spend the money on that in the game. But those, all these raid buildings. Once you get done with doing your stuff and the tasks you have to do, I just set them all to treasure hunt, and they'll just continually treasure hunt and either bring back ten thousand dollars or five thousand raid points or blueprint. So they're really helpful to have all that extra money coming in. What else? What else? We talked about industry. You need every industry. And you need to be doing the trade routes that get you the extra money for those exports. Um, this is... <laughs> we got our you know, space program, all that. But we're in the modern era. And once you get to um, the Cold Wars era... Another thing that's going to make you a lot of money is tourism. I make quite a bit from tourism. This is a new ship, $232 a month. Um, passengers, oh that's passengers, but anyway. And these things make you a lot of money too. All your restaurants and everything like that, as long as they're visited anyway. And, oh, another thing, you got to make sure you keep these buildings upgraded every time. Every little bit of efficiency helps a lot. And, um, so what I did coming from the cold, or the, <laughs> there's so many errors. Coming from the uh, colonial era is I had all that money and I used all that money to build my infrastructure to make th sure things were efficient. So, um... I built um, some industry buildings, all the new ones for the World War era, and I put in the parking decks where I needed them, and I had the, I saved my knowledge research 
so I could immediately, when I entered the Cold War era, or the World Wars era, I can do the free wheels, which makes sure everybody can use cars to get where they gotta go a lot quicker. So your your Teamsters are going to the grocery store or whatever, you know, the circus quicker and back quicker. So they can go back to work and fill up these ports. Efficiency is the name of the game. And you don't want like a problem I kept having as I get laid into the Cold or World Wars era, the streets fill up with so many cars then nothing is moving again. So you you gotta make sure um that you can uh, when once you leave the world wars era you got to make sure and immediately build the new infrastructure so your streets aren't going to be clogged with cars see like when uh that part in the game where i'm just leaving the world wars era everything's starting to get all clogged up i have a bunch of money saved up so immediately when i enter the cold war era I get all these metro stations down and there's I mean you don't want too many of them because it slows the more you have the slower they are but let's see here we'll go to uh, I think overlays city metro whoops we got one two three four five Six, seven, eight, and the airport is a metro station. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve of them. Thirteen of them. That might be too much, but I kind of wanted. You know, the city's so big. I mean, where where there's not metro stations, there's car parks. So, if people can't use the metro, they can drive a car. But there's a lot less traffic. And most of the traffic is all the trucks. And it's almost to a point where there's <laughs> too many trucks. But you can never have too many trucks, I'll tell you what. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what you gotta do. You gotta build up your money so when you go into the next era, you can immediately build all the infrastructure you need to keep things moving gotta keep things moving if things slow down you go bankrupt real quick and then when you get into the modern era if you're if you got money like this rolling in you're doing you're, you're doing great you're doing you got a successful city as long as you keep that same practice of Every time you build somewhere, you, you build all the infrastructure to support it. And make sure you have a lot of these. And every single one of these is on double shift. So every single one of these 33 buildings has 12 workers and all the housing necessary for them. I still gotta upgrade some. I've been upgrading to these modern apartment buildings. They hold a lot more people and less uh, space. Also, uh, another thing to make money that's overlooked in this game is the media buildings. That's something I always build um, in the colonial era. There should still be one here somewhere. Hold on. I gotta find this. This is the original part of town. Where are you? Right here. The newspaper. Right now it's set to penny saver. What does that do? Earns you five dollars for each citizen living in the vicinity of the newspaper every time they rest. Decreases five liberty, but whatever. So in the colonial colonial era, everywhere where everybody's living, you know, they're in range of a newspaper. And then when I get when I get to the World Wars era. I build the radio station. Now, where's the radio station? It's in here somewhere. Uh, <laughs> if I can find it. Everything's gotten... Oh, right here. 
What does the radio station do? Public service and advertisements. You earn $8 for each citizen employed in the vicinity of the radio station. So, when they're at work, they're making me money um, by the radio station and also producing. And when they're at home, they're making me money uh, by reading the newspaper. And then when you get into the Cold War era, got the TV station and it's set to pay TV. So you earn $10 for each citizen living in an electrified bid buildings in the vicinity of the TV station. And the reason why I picked this Eiffel Tower is it broadcasts the TV station all over the island. So you don't really, you only need one. And then what else? Um, oh, the office buildings. They make me tons of money too. So this one's on consumer business. It made $1,960 last month. This one's on corporate business. It made $2,100 last month. Corporate business, no, $2,100. Um, see, and these are the, the hotels, the tourism. Also, with the tourism, if you go to... Uh, it's the customs office, yes. Uh, tourist fees. Every tourist arriving in Tropico pays $10. Boom. Got that. So every little bit helps. Even your houses. If there's nobody living in them, you're not making any money. See this one. This house made me $38 last month. It doesn't seem like a lot, but there's, there's a ton of houses here. Look at all this. These buildings may make money too, I mean, obviously, but they make more. But even even your poor housing, the, the tenements. Budget is $144. It made $144. My churches don't make anything because I don't have the church fee edict. But you can turn this edict and every visitor to a religious building has to pay a dollar. Um, I used to use this in the beginning in the colonial era a lot you get a lot more immigration but uh, there's a 300% chance that each one of them is a criminal and then you, your whole islands full of criminals and you need like 5,000 prisons and yeah I don't as long as you make enough money you can just hire the people you need foreign workers but yeah I mean that's pretty much just the the name of the game and when I got into this modern era uh, one of the edicts speedway increases the speed of vehicles using the road which helps a lot it costs money but as long as you uh, the efficiency is well worth it faster the trucks the more money it gets to the ports. Ah, uh, we have a network sh shortage? No. Huh. Look at that. We're at 1.2 million. We're doing really good. We still have some of these old farms, but... Look how many people are using those metro stations. Lots of people. Plantation and a good we'll modernize the ranch. Screw that single payer healthcare system. Should we launch a rocket? Let's see if we can launch uh, our spaceship here. Yeah, we can. This is a cool tool. Later in the game, you can do commercial mission, uh, we'll make, which will make you 20 grand. Or you can do a prestige mission if you're not well liked, you know, send a, you know, research mission into space to make people like you, but I'm pretty well liked anyway, so I just use this for money. Off you go on your commercial space mission. Brought to you by Kmart. <laughs> I, there's some buildings I still haven't built yet, like the nuclear program and 
all that, but there we go, off into space. But yeah, um, I mean, once you get to this point in the game, I've I've been in the Cold Wars era and had twice this population and still not survived because because uh, my city wasn't efficient or country whatever you want to call it oh the church is burning that's one thing I don't have is a lot of firefighters I mean I got a couple of them but and I, I haven't even gone to any of the other islands yet so we got a long ways to go Maybe I'll do another video on this country later, but I can check my trade routes, which ones are completed. Oh, these ones are all still going. And you notice once you get later in the game, these trade routes take a lot longer to fulfill because the quantities are much higher. Let's see, what else do we got? We got our aircraft carrier sitting here. Oh, garbage dumps. These get expensive. They cost 10,000 bucks a piece to dump once they fill up. That one's not full yet. That one's not full yet. That's our cyber operations center. We got, you know, a couple of cathedrals. We got the luxury hotels. This is like the government quarter over here, and and some tourism. You know, casino, hotel. We got our Eiffel Tower there. <laughs> Childhood museum. See, some of the things we haven't built. Um, we don't have the Museum of Modern Art, or the Beach Resort, or the Hang Gliding. Uh, we don't have the Nuclear Program or the Mausoleum. I have everything else, though. Uh, we have all of this. We have all of this, too. We No, we, I don't think we have an asylum. Um, have everything except for the drone command in the military. Don't have the police blimp. You know, another good way to make money is the banks. They generate, on their basic settings, they generate interest in your treasury. So, that helps. Um, as you see, there. I think we have two or three banks. But you can set them to different private banking, slush fund, um... Yeah, generates 5% interest. Made us $590 last month. There's another one here. Same thing. Uh, I thought I had a third one that's on private banking or something like that. Pharmaceutical company. Most of my industry is back in downtown, but this is kind of like the second industrial district, you know. Uh, I started building all this area in the beginning because this is where all the mines were. And there's still a lot of them that I haven't used. Look at all this. There's some that aren't used because they have buildings on them, but... Like right there's a nickel one. That, that one upset me because you don't see these mines until you progress through the ages and I had already built on top of it, you know. I don't want to put a mine directly, you know, in the center of the government quarters, so. I'll just find it elsewhere. You know, there's uranium here. I do have one right there. Another uranium mine. 
But yeah, if you wanna, that that's how you make money in this game. Basically, everything I said. <laughs> I used to worry incessantly worry about um, people living right next to their work. But in the colonial era, that doesn't matter a whole lot. I mean, I think all the houses were like right here, and this is where all the farms were. <clears throat> but it starts to matter later in the game when people need to get, you know, from somewhere over here for work. What is up with all these cars right here? Huh. See, that traffic is a problem to me. It is delaying my trucks from getting to the port. Maybe they're all going to the airport? Yeah. I should probably put another metro station next to this because it seems like a lot of people are using this one. Yeah, that's too much traffic to me. Like, all of a sudden, I got a ton of traffic there. It's probably tourists. Man, look at all those cars coming out of that thing. Yeah, it needs a metro station right here. But anyway, yeah, I just wanted to do a short video on this. Because I haven't done any videos on this game in a long time. See, and this is kind of a flaw in my road system. There's this one main road that goes to this part of the town. I tried to build other roads around, but everybody insists on using this one. We got a lot of tasks built up. I'm gonna pause it. Looks like everybody's going to the airport, yeah. But alrighty. I think that'll be it for this video. Until I hope you learned something. <laughs> Until next time. Peace out.